Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called A New Dimension in Grid Hosting. Our speakers are Steve Lavigne and Myron Curtis. Steve Lavigne is one of the founders of A Dimension Beyond, Inc. He has been involved in virtual worlds since 2006. Ever since he first got into Second Life, he wanted to host virtual worlds on his own servers, and now he does. Myron Curtis, a.k.a. Dark Eagle Darkstone, is retired from the Butte Glen Community College and is a presenter at the Science Circle. He is CEO of A Dimension Beyond Founder, a developer, and owner of the Virtual Worlds Grid. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC20. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. And if we don't have time for questions, they will take questions at their booth number 13 in the Expo 3 region. Welcome, Steve and Myron. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I guess we should start. Lucky booth number 13. You can find it by, it has a big uh, cube like this rotating cube that's on the stage but much bigger, and uh, if the cube on the stage, if you want information about us, just click on it. Uh, Myron and I both have over 15 years' experience in building virtual worlds and hosting them. Myron does own the Virtual Worlds Grid, uh, which is served on our servers. Uh, right now, we host Open Simulator. Dream Grid, Halcyon, and Cyber Lounge worlds. We can do custom servers, website hosting, and more. Uh, Myron, you want to talk about some of your experience? Um, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I've been involved in this from the beginning, and I've watched it evolve. And there are a lot of things that we've been um, discussing over and over, really, at these conferences that are really kind of stagnating us. One of the first things, of course, is the fact that um, it's really difficult for people to get connected to a virtual world these days. Uh, they're used to having everything in a browser. Like a lot of people, we've tried to um, create a web-based uh, virtual world, and that really has not worked out very well for anybody, uh, at least not for me. So lately, I've been thinking about the possibility that maybe we should just create a web browser that also is able to um, browse virtual worlds. And that's something I'm looking at now. But in the meanwhile, um, our industry is at a very important crossroads. Unfortunately, due to a pandemic, a lot of people are looking at virtual worlds now as a way of um, getting back to normal. And we have a huge opportunity here, but we have to find ways to get people in. And we've been building these worlds for a long time. It's time to make sure that people know about it. So we have a huge PR issue in front of us and we need to start working on that. Well, this is part of the reason why we got into hosting. Hosting does two things. One, it makes it easy for people to get into virtual worlds and, and actually having their own grid. The other thing is, is that hopefully down the road, it will provide us more money for our development efforts. But uh, True. we have uh, our own servers on a redundant backbone connection. They're in a data, uh, data center down in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, uh, we we looked into the whole thing of servers. We could have rented space on the cloud or we could have rented a server from somebody else. And we kind of came to the conclusion that uh, me as the bean counter of this group decided that, hey, we'll do our own server. And uh, so we've actually got it so that we 
can have that server and not pay crazy amounts for it. So we've got this really excellent server, and uh, we're hosting virtual worlds on it. And uh, so one of the things we host is DreamGrid. And DreamGrid is uh, rather interesting. Uh, Fred has done a wonderful job with it and made it really easy to use. It actually takes OpenSIM and makes it so almost anybody can use it. Uh, so what we do is we do it a little differently. When we sell a server for OpenSIM, most of our OpenSIM servers are on DreamGrid, except for Virtual Worlds Grid, which, uh, which Myron does in his own way. <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, is we give you total root level control, okay? When you get a server from us or a grid from us, you actually have a full Windows desktop for Dream Grid that you can go in and do anything you want with your grid. We're not doing the one click type of thing because we figured that people wanted a little bit more control. And part of that is I'm kind of a control freak. I don't like to have to go and put in a ticket every time I want to do something. So here we take it, we give you that server, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, we also have uh, custom set up with everything you need. Uh, whatever you need, we can do it. In, uh, so we have lots and lots of help available to you. There's uh, there's help files that go with Dream Grid. There's also a whole manual, PDF manual that we put on the server for you. Uh, it's basically very easy to do. Uh, so the uh, the other thing is, is we sell our s services by uh, what you're using on our server, how much CPU, how much RAM, how much hard drive space. Uh, so you can start out with a pretty small, like little 10 region server, or even a two region server if you wanted to do that. You can start out with a really little server and expand it up. We have one uh, grid there called Eros Resort that started out small and kept growing. He's now up to a region equivalent of, I think, over 150 regions. And every time he needed a little more and we watched what the server was doing, uh, we just added it to it. It was very easy. Uh, so if you want to, uh, things like updates and all that are quite easy. We also can run the uh, grid web page there with JOpenSim. Uh, running on Joomla, which will give you all kinds of information about the uh, grid and whatever else you want to put up there. Uh, the next thing is Halcyon. Halcyon uh, is something that Bob Curtis does. Uh, we have several Halcyon grids, grids right now that we are hosting. Uh, we can create a Halcyon grid of any size. Uh, we have a starter little uh, single server Halcyon grid that we put together for people that want to try it out and see how it all works. Uh, and uh, actually, Bob is working on a uh, system right now that is a um, marketplace, the uh, Mundos Market. So then Halcyon grids will be able to have a marketplace kind of like the Kitely Marketplace. Cyber Lounge is another thing that we're in the middle of. When Myron said we don't have a good web world, I could argue with him on that one. Uh, I'm quite deeply involved in the uh, design and working of Cyber Lounge with Dieter, uh, who is the actual owner of it. It's a 3D world that is totally web-based. Uh, uh, a Dimension Beyond is a North America distributor and part of the development team. Uh, we can host just a region for you or a whole grid of any size. It's a very feature-rich, stable, and extremely secure environment. Everything is encrypted. 
The other thing is, in a lot of ways, it has a lot more features than OpenSIM has right now. The only limit to Cyber Lounge is it's um, running in a web browser, and the web browser will only handle so much. Uh, we also have, uh, in Cyber Lounge, we have a couple of universities in Germany that are using it for their distance learning and are quite successful at it. Uh, Myron, do you have stuff you want to add to that? Well, um, I really think Cyber Lounge is probably the closest thing we've had to a working web-based uh, virtual world that has a lot of features in it. Um, and you've told me recently that you can now do some building in there and, uh, you know, starting to work on the avatar uh, appearance and abilities. So, yeah, that's that's growing fine, and I like that. Uh, when I was talking about um, before about, you know, the failure of um, web-based systems so far, I was really referring to the fact that, you know, you don't have a lot of, uh, well, what do you call it, um, gesturing and uh, other things that we're so used to. And yeah, that's true. we really need something that's simpler to use. But, you know, the second two things that we have a, are addressing here is like you said, control, and the the third one is basically um, mobility, being able to go from grid to grid, very much like an internet, and that's the hypergrid. And you know we're getting that slowly but surely in Cyber Lounge, and actually that's actually going to be we, huge. We have hypergrid working in Cyber Cyber Lounge right now. Oh, that's new. Cool. Yeah, that's just come up in the last week. Uh, Dieter's been working on that, and uh, you can go with your avatar from server to server, keep your same avatar, go wherever you want in the Cyber Lounge world, or in the Cyber that's Lounge metaverse, fantastic. I guess. So, yeah, we, we keep on looking at these little things. We put them onto the roadmap, and we're working on Cyber Lounge. Right now, Cyber Lounge is in late beta. Uh, we're working towards 1.0 probably in the spring. Uh, and so we've got our little list of stuff we want to do. And uh, I think it's going to be really, really good. Uh, that's huge. You know, so, yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, Cyber Lounge is really cool because it's very simple. I mean, it will even run on something like a Raspberry Pi. And... Uh, you could have your own uh, grid running on a Raspberry Pi, which is a very small computer. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I see some real growth potential here and uh, possibly even something to go on beyond OpenSIM. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that we also want to talk about are... Um, free meeting spaces in Cyber Lounge and open SIM grids and free regions available for schools. Uh, earlier on in this, uh, in this conference, we had different instructors talking about wanting to have a space and a place to work and uh, needing servers and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, We've got them, and I'm more than willing to help people that that need space. We've got grid space, we've got region space, uh, we've got cyber lounge space. Uh, let's get together and uh, and do something about this. Get you guys going. The other thing is is we can do custom conference hosting for any size group because it's real mm -hmm. easy. We've got servers, we've got the technology. Uh, we can do region design and execution. We've got people who are really good builders working with us. Uh, we, also, we also do web hosting, if you'd like that, because when you have a server, you can serve all kinds of stuff. Uh, but the main thing with our hosting is, is we do it in a different way, and we give you the power to do whatever you want with your grid. Uh, uh, that's basically it. Anything more? Myron, that you want to say? Yeah, actually, there is. 
you know, what we're doing is what a lot of people are trying to do. Uh, I think we're taking a slightly different approach to it and giving people basically a virtual machine that uh, they can run their system on and have complete control over it. That's wonderful. But the one thing that all of us are failing on is getting the message out to the general population. You know, it's it's classic. We build it and we expect everybody to come and they're not going to if they don't know about it. So we have to come up with a way of marketing what we're doing. Kylie is kind of doing that a little bit. And um, Second Life is starting to do that pretty well. But the rest of the open sim worlds are kind of falling behind on that. And that's something we really need to get together on and find a way of marketing our industry as an industry to get people involved in it. And basically, we need to find out what the world wants and offer it to them. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, um, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that's okay. That was very interesting. We are um, out of time. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, you can ask Stephen Myron questions at their lucky booth number 13 on Expo Region number three. Thank you. And I would like to thank you again, Stephen Myron, for a terrific presentation. Thank As a you. reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 10.30 a.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Understanding Lag in Firestorm. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 20 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with the Surreal Museum region and the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. <laughs>